Well, well, hello everybody. Okay, let's start. We just had a little bit of delay over here. Let's do a quick check. Are we okay on the cam, the video? Are we okay on the sound? Can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, let's go right ahead. Uh, before I start, uh, I wanted to go over this. Uh, we were looking at one particular topic in the last week, and we were discussing some levels of support resistance. We were looking at the three M's, money management, and the procedures of trading. Uh, this is something which I had mentioned on last Thursday. The Australian dollar was ra rallying up, and there were a lot of traders. There would have been a lot of traders who would have probably wanted to go long, but there was a strong zone of resistance, which we call as a supply and demand zone here, and we expect price to get rejected. And I even mentioned that this looks like it's heading towards a bearish divergence, which is exactly what happened. Price made high and higher highs. The stochastics did not confirm the same. As you can see over here, on this higher high, the stochastics were way down. So it was a bearish divergence and price went down. This was a good trade. Happened on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four, five days. It was an excellent move. And based on the Fibonacci's that we look after, the targets, you know that we've gone over the targets. We were looking for a target of 127 and look where price stopped, exactly at 127. So procedures of trading, waiting for the trade to give a setup, not jumping into a trade whenever price is just moving, keeping your head cool, looking at levels of support resistance and going with the flow of price. It gives you good trades. Now this is just something a little ahead. Now I want to go ahead and say that, okay, what's the expected, what is expected. Now what we do have over here, if you look at the FIBs, this one stopped exactly at 61.8. For me, stopping at 61.8 is the beginning of a harmonic pattern. I don't know whether I should will be able to give the annotation over here. Just give me one moment. Let's see if I can get my annotations up. Right. So for me, this becomes. Uh, Whipple doesn't have the sound. Is sound okay? Just Whipple does not have the sound. Is sound okay, everybody? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I think when I put on that annotation, then it becomes a little bit of an issue. Let, let, let me. It's just a question of, yes, it is the Australian dollar. As I said, this is not a trading signal, but this is just the procedures of trading that I'm going over. This is what we are trying to look at. Do I have a line over here? No. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm looking for a Gartley pattern somewhere down over here. So we are looking for some moves towards a certain level. Okay. Well, always everybody's uh, different ways of looking at it. Scott Carney is very good at harmonics, but what I do with the harmonics is very different from what Scott Carney does. But overall, uh, let, let's just get down to one thing: is whatever you do, the simple fact is that please. See to it that your trading procedures are correct. That is the point that I want to make over here. Do not just jump into a trade because price is moving, because these are what we call as sucker moves. All right. Okay. Let, let's get down to business. Right. Let, let's start. Let's take the example of Euro USD on the daily. We are going to be looking at trend lines, understanding trends, fractal bars, and plotting Fibonacci ratios. They are all intercorrelated. Let's start with the concept of the fractal bars. Well, let's have a look at this one. Right Now, this group of bars over here, as you can see here, the one with the highest high, the center bar with the highest high, is known as a fractal bar. Now, a fractal bar is a group of three bars. It can also be a group of five bars, but it's a group of three bars. Now, this is what I would call as a bearish fractal, where the central bar, let's put this down, to three bars, the central bar has the high which is higher than the previous bar and which is higher than the next bar. Mind you, we are 
talking about the highs and the lows. We are not talking about the open and close of a candle. We are talking about the highs and the lows. So if you come across a group of three bars, where the central bar has the high, which is higher than the previous bar, and higher than the higher the next bar. Okay. All right. Let, let, let's continue. All right. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So we were talking about Let's go back to the beginning. We were talking about fractal bars. Right? So this is what I would classify as a bearish fractal. We had a high which is higher than the previous bar and the higher than the next bar. Higher than the high of the previous bar. Higher than the high of the next bar. This would be classified as a bullish fractal where the low is lower than the low of the previous bar and the low of the next bar. Right? Now the reason why I call them as bullish and bearish fractals is that if you come across a situation like this, let's take this one. It usually indicates a change of trend. Now, fractals are very, very important for identifying changes of trends because whenever price changes trend, whether it's in a smaller term time frame, whether it's on a larger term time frame, it is always on fractals. Let's take this example. Let's zoom this down over here into this current down move that we are looking at. And if you look at price, it moved up from here. This is also a fractal, bullish fractal. I'm going to take it down over here. Right? This is a bullish fractal because it has a low, which is lower than the low of the previous bar, is lower than the low of the next bar. It's kind of a V-shape. Similarly, when price moved down or pullback, you can call it a pullback. This is also a fractal. This is a bearish fractal. So any change, price changes trend, any change takes place on a fractal bar, has to take place on a fractal bar, because fractals do form when price changes trend. So it becomes very, very important to understand what a fractal bar is. In fact, when you're trading basically only on price action without using any indicators, these things become very, very important because they tell you, they indicate early whether the momentum is still there, price is gaining momentum or it's not. All right? Now, let's start off with the concept of the fractals and the trend lines. Now, once we had a look at these fractals, let's start plotting trend lines. The first thing. Now, when do you really determine that there has been a change in trend? Let, let's take this uptrend. Price has been up, it's pulled back, up, down, up, down. From here, it starts changing trend. In this previous uptrend, price was making higher highs and higher lows. That's exactly the definition of a trend. Right? And let's just talk about fractals. When we are talking about higher lows, low, each low subsequently, each fractal subsequently going higher. Here, I'm looking at fractals. Each fractal going higher, so the lows going higher. Similarly, each high, these are bearish fractals, each high also going higher. Now, if you trade the hard right edge of the chart, this is where we were, right? You have price, I'm sorry, making higher highs and higher lows. At this stage, you may expect price to continue to the upside if price this high and makes another higher high. Obviously, it's a continuation of the uptrend. When does it indicate that there has been a change of momentum? Mind you, it's not a confirmation of a change of trend. We're just talking about a shift of momentum. Is when price makes a lower high. A simple price action. So price subsequently or, I'm sorry, initially in the move was making higher highs, higher lows. Once it makes a lower high, it tells you that there has been a shift in momentum. Once again, mind it, it's not a confirmation of a change of trend. It's simply an indication of change of momentum. But this change of momentum gives us a place to plot the trend lines. And now, at this stage, let me remove everything else. Let me just keep those bars. Right? We got to know a change of trend at this stage over here, that we expect price to move down. Now, let's take it one step further. Now, we can identify, since price is indication of a change of momentum, our definition of momentum, 
Well, when price is moving in one direction and the momentum is continuous, there is a continuous trend to it and the trend starts changing. That means there is a shift of momentum. So it's the underlying volatility of price, if you can call it. And it gives you an indication. Now, before price changes trend, there is a general thumb rule or it's a basic rule that price always shifts momentum. Your momentum, it's in one direction, price direction is going somewhere and minute it starts changing the underlying momentum, it indicates a shift in the trend. So you can call it the volatility of price, the direction of price, you can define it as momentum. Right. Now, let's take this one step further. Now, let's, because we are indicating a change of trend, let's classify this, this particular bar. Well, right over here, MRC, this is a change of trend. As I said, when price makes a lower high, if you expect the uptrend to continue, price would have made a higher high. So once it makes a lower high, it is indicating a shift. It's indicating a change. Now once we get this indication of change, let's define this point as a pivot high and let's define this point as a pivot low. For the simple reason is that this is the lowest low of the wave and this is the highest high of the wave. I'm trying to go very slow in this, but it's a simple fact and it's really not very difficult to understand this. A trend or a change of trend should be clearly visible. It's just as simple as that. In this, can we really identify the highest high and the highest low of a wave? One trick, if you can call it, one helpful point is that if you cannot identify a wave, a highest high or a lowest low in a wave, just go one time frame higher. Right? If you go one time frame higher, don't you think this can be classified as a wave, where we can classify this as your lowest low and this is the highest high? So we classify this as a fractal, pivot fractal. Uh, not necessarily. See, every pullback will give you an indication of a shift of momentum, but it will not be an indication of a change of trend. Yes, there is an underlying momentum because even in the pullback, there is a shift in the momentum, but it does not necessarily translate into a change of trend. That's exactly where your trend lines come in. Right? When do you confirm that there is a change of trend? Every pullback. Now, let, let's take this example. You had price moving up. At this stage, it gave you another lower high. Now, if you're trading the hard right edge of the chart, wouldn't you have said that this is a possible indication of a change of trend? Yes, it is, because that's what we are seeing. But then, what happens? Price still resumes up. Right? We'll come back to this example a little later. Let's start with the fact that once you have identified a shift. Let's start plotting trend lines because your trend lines are the simplest way, the most simple, easiest way to determine a change of trend. When do we start plotting trend lines? Let's establish some basic rules of trend lines. This is what I want to do today. A trend line has to be plotted on pivot highs and pivot lows. We have classified this point high for the time being. Just let's ignore this. We'll come back to this one. And we'll come back to this one, this one over here. We have identified this as a pivot high. So your trend line has to start at a pivot point and connecting, not exactly connecting the line, but starting from a pivot point. So the first thumb rule of your trend line, and the same goes for Fibonacci ratios, we'll come back to it, that they have to start from a pivot point. A pivot point is simply a swing point from where price can, is, has visibly changed trend. So the first thing is that your trend line starts at a pivot point. Now here we are looking for a move, expecting a move to the downside. Obviously we will be plotting trend lines right over here. We expect price to change trend, breaking a trend line. The first rule is it starts from a pivot point and it starts from a wick of a candle. The second thumb rule is a trend line can never go through the real body of a candle. 
mind remember a train line is allowed to go through the wick of a candle but it will never it should never go through the real body of a candle there is a rider to this it should never go through a candle between the pivot points the pivot high and the pivot low so if i start plotting my trend line from here if i plot it on this pivot point it has to connect all the fractals if i connect it here the trend line is going through the candles which is not allowed so i take the next pivot not good i take this pivot is reasonable because the trend line is not going through any candle in between these two swing points am i making myself clear let me go over the steps again when did you identify or determine a possible shift of trend at this stage right we are here let's trade the hard right edge of the chart we are over here this is where we expect price to move down start plotting trend lines we start plotting trend lines from the swing points pivot lows we plot the first trend line your trend line has to connect all the fractal lows so it has to connect fractal lows can i connect this fractal no it's going through the real body of a candle in between the swing high the pivot high and the pivot low can i connect it to this fractal no it's still going through a, any candle can i connect it to this yes so this is the first valid trend lines now in a trend you may get get up to 2 3 maybe even 4 trend lines each and every trend line starts off from where the previous trend line has ended so i can plot another trend line where did i connect from this fractal so i'll take another trend line connecting the fractal lows can i connect it to this one once again is it valid no for the simple reason that price is going through a candle in between the pivot highs and pivot lows so i'll use this one this is valid because price as i said is allowed to go through a wick of a candle but it is not going through the real body of a candle can i take a third trend line let me just correct this one let me plot it on this week i can plot one more trend line because i want to connect all the fractal lows as many fractal lows as possible in between the swing points now these become the most valid trend lines once again let's get back to the situation you determined it over here right let's trade the hard right edge of the chart by the time you plotted the trend lines you see that price has already broken one trend line and it is headed towards the next one that means it is a very strong indication of a change and you can expect price to move towards the downside i hope this is clear let's remember the thumb rules your trend line has to start on a swing point a pivot high or a pivot low a trend line connects all the fractals in between the swing points a trend line is not allowed to go through the real body of a candle let's take it one step further let, let's take this example let, let me just because we are just looking behind looking behind is very easy than trading on the hard right edge can i not identify these two points as my swing points swing high pivot high swing low pivot low where do we start plotting trend lines thumb rule number 1 it has to start from a pivot point thumb rule number 2 it should never go through a candle in between the swing points right let's start plotting it now let me just remove these if i start my trend line if i connect it to this fractal they have to they have to come line wise of course so my first fractal is actually here is it valid it's not my second till i can see is over here is this valid it is because it's not going through a candle in between the pivot high and the pivot low my second trend line follow up trend line on this fractal is it valid 
it is I can stretch it over here to this fractal because it can go through a wick of a candle uh, Ahmed, you should always use the highs and the lows for the simple reason that on, on a candle, the wick of a candle, if you go down to a smaller term time frame, it is some movement where price has gone to. You cannot ignore price action. Right? Let, let, let's just take a simple example. Right now, currently, a uh, good question because... No, Jano, I trade with this. There is no, it's not for any bias. This is the simplest way to determine a change of trend. All my techniques, whether I use the harmonics, whether I use the divergence, the simplest way to get an entry into a trade or to look at a possible change of trend is trend lines. It doesn't cost you anything. It's very simple and yet the most effective. Coming back to Ahmed's question over here. Let, let's take this. It, it works on every time frame, Steve so long as you follow these basic rules. These rules are meant for that. Any time frame. Right? Ahmed, let's take this particular example, this last bar that we can see. Now, if you plot your trend line on the close, right? let's say that I plot my trend line on the close, where price has closed or opened over here. Let's go down to a smaller term time frame. On a smaller term time frame, you are ignoring this would have actually gone here. You are ignoring the price action where prices had already gone to. You cannot ignore price action. So your trend line and even your Fibonacci's have always to be plotted on wicks of the candles. Right? Coming back to this, my second trend line was here. This is valid. Can I plot a third trend line? I do have the provision. I can plot the third trend line. I have a fractal. This is a fractal. I can stretch it over here. So I have three trend lines. Now here, when did we, let's be very straight, when did we, when would we have established that there is a possible change of trend? When we would have come across this higher low? Right? So by the time you plot your trends, price is well at the trend line. So maybe you have missed a lot of move, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that even if you do enter a trade over here, you are confidently going into a trade where the trend is good, where you have established a change of trend. Uh, Boyke, diagonal trend lines, believe me, are much, much more effective than your horizontal lines or vertical lines. Now, why do prices adhere to it? Well, let, let's use the simple logic to it. Let's, does price move in a straight line up? It doesn't move in a straight line up. Does price move flat horizontal? It doesn't move horizontal. How does price move? Price always moves pullbacks, diagonals. If it starts moving in pullbacks, if it moves diagonally, isn't it logical that the diagonal lines would be much more effective? Vipul, I'm coming down to this exactly the same point. Let, let's take the hard right edge of the chart, right? Let, let's go down to a smaller term time frame on this one. What are we looking at? Let's say I establish this as a swing low. As far as I'm concerned right now, this is a swing high. I don't know what's going to happen here. But right now, this is a swing high. The concepts that I looked at, that I told you, the rules, as I said, works on all time frames. So we are just using a smaller term time frame to demonstrate the example of whether this really determines a change of trend or is just going to be a pullback. Let's plot the trend lines. Where would you plot the trend lines from here, starting from your pivot point? connecting all the fractal lows. This would be the first valid trend line. I cannot plot it on this one because it's going through the real body. This would be the first valid trend line. Can I plot another trend line? I can. Now trend lines are dynamic in nature. They are dynamic in nature. As far as we are concerned, if price breaks this trend line, it could just be a pullback and price could still move towards the upside. Now, this is a point about double trend lines. 
is if price breaks both the trend lines, then it is a strong indication of a change of trend. That's the reason we have not one, but as far as possible, two, three, four trend lines. That's the best indication. The first trend line, the main trend line, I call it the primary trend line, is the most important indication for a possible change of trend. Okay, let's back, get back to questions. All right. Uh, just give me a moment. Pan on fire, narrow ranges. Smaller term time frames when price is range bound, it will not work. Simple thing is that a trend line is valid or it's effective only when there is a trend. If price is in a range, obviously your trend lines would not be clear. So when price is range bound, whether it's a smaller term time frame or a higher term time frame, your trend lines will keep shifting. Remember, trend lines are dynamic in nature. So trend lines are very effective for trends. You must have a trend. And for me as a trader, I always look for a trend. If price is range bound, I would ignore the price action. I would not even try to look for a trade over there. Right? All right. Edward, Aussie is a good example of horizontal support as it's ranging. Absolutely. Now, there's the basic difference here. If price is ranging, then your horizontal levels of support resistance work fine. If price is trending, your trend lines work fine. Every situation demands something different. All right, Timothy says I'm conf getting confused by smaller term time frames. Simple fact, Timothy, is if you are getting confused on smaller term time frames, do not trade on smaller term time frames. There is a lot of noise on smaller term time frames. Higher time frames, I prefer trading on four hours and one hour and daily and above, not even the one hour. Higher term time frames give you a much clearer picture. Right? All right, Timothy says let's have a look at the four hour and the daily. We'll come back to that. Fib retracement. Uh, yes, I wouldn't, MRC says, is it a rule that the third trend line break is a change of trend? Uh, it's a thumb rule. I wouldn't call it a rule, but yes, it's a strong indication because by the time price breaks three trend lines, le let's get back to the daily on this one, right? Let's remove these trend lines and let's once again go to the first example that we were looking at, trend line one most valid. This is only one trend line that we can get over here on the daily. And a week of this, if we go down to a smaller term time frame, we could have got some more trend lines. But there's only one trend line. Okay. Mm. On the USD JPY, Timothy says, on what time frame, Timothy, USD JPY? Uh, Pram, was the trades game plan? The game plan here is nothing. I am just demonstrating. I want to show you the correct way to plot trend lines because most of the traders honestly still do not know how to plot the correct trend lines. You can plot trend lines anywhere and everywhere, but the correct picture, the most correct picture is the one that is that you can get by plotting the correct trend lines. All right. Uh, the horizontal lines... Uh, these are, Boyke, these are the trades. We, we just entered a trade over here. This is an ongoing trade right now. We are on a sell on the euro. All right. Okay, USD JPY daily. Let's take the USD JPY daily. Now, Timothy says apply the concepts on the USD JPY. Here, important point. Ha <laughs> ha. No, Louis, that, that is part of my trading room plan. If you want to know, the reason why I s why we sold the euro, you'll have to come and subscribe to the room and take up the course because this is based on the methods that we are doing. Well, uh, send me your email address. Uh, I'm very frank. I'll send you whatever it is, the courses that we have based on something. Let, let me just add, as soon as we, once we are done with this, I'll show you some of the concepts that we are using, the horizontal the harmonics and the wolf waves and things like that. We get some excellent trades. We'll come back to this, Louis. Uh, that's a very good question. A 45 degree angle is an ideal trend line, definitely, because let, let's put it, the, let's take this example. The steeper the trend line, the further the price has gone away from the mean and the f more chances of price coming back to the mean. A 45 degree is a nice trend, is a proper trend. Right? Okay, 
let, let, let's take this. Now, here, it's a very good example. On the USDJPY, on my chart, here what I can see on my chart. What can I identify as a pivot low to start a trend line with? Right? I can identify this as a swing point, this as a swing point. So I would plot, start plotting my trend lines from here. First trend line would be this one. Just about valid. It's going just about going through. No, the first trend line would be here. Let, let's keep it very straight. Trend line one. Trend line two. But as I said, if things are not really clear, you should go one time frame higher. Let's go one time frame higher. On the one time frame higher, can I not see this one as the most prominent swing low? So my first trend line starts from this is my first trend line. Correct? My second trend line is correct. Let's get back to the daily. Let's use the concept. My third trend line would be over here. Now, on the third trend line, can I plot it on this fractal? It's going through a bar. I cannot. Can I use this fractal? I cannot. I have to use this fractal. So these are the three most valid trend lines. Now, let me put one example over here. When you're trading the hard right edge of the chart, when you were plotting the third trend line, wouldn't you have plotted it over here saying that, okay, this looks like a valid trend line and price starts moving down. It does give you a kind of a lower high. So you say that, okay, price is expected to move down. When is your confirmation? When price breaks the trend line is an indication. It breaks it, but it moves up again. Now, once it moves up, your trend lines are dynamic in nature. You have another fractal. You will shift the trend line over here. Till the time price breaks this again, it does come down. Is it a change of trend? Remember, we have three trend lines. What did we say was the confirmation? If not the third one, at least the middle one? No, it still went up. My trend line changes again. Is this still a change of trend? It will not be a confirmation till price breaks this trend line again. Alright? I, I hope this concept is clear. See, it's not going to be very easy to understand on the first concept because of the dynamic nature of trend lines. Ab absolutely, Ahmed. That, that, in fact, is the most valid trend line. The more points a trend lines connect, the more stronger is the trend line and the break of the trend line is a strong indication. MRC, it's a con it would be based on trend lines, a confirmation would be when price breaks the second trend line. Let, let's take it one time frame higher. An indication of a change of trend will come when price breaks the second trend line. Even if price breaks the first trend line, there is a possibility that it may still move up. This middle trend line becomes a strong confirmation. Right, Gabriel? Yeah, sure. Uh, we can New Zealand one hour. We'll go ahead with it. Okay. Depending on the... See, this is on a weekly time frame through. On general time frames, you will not... We talked about a 45 degree angle time frame. This is not a 45 degree. This is a very steep time frame. The price has gone beyond the means. It will come back to stretch. Most of the times you do not come across situations like this where the trend is not this strong. This is a very strong trend. Forex tends to trend well, but it also tends to trend in a very reasonable way. Let's take the example of the New Zealand on the one hour. Let, let's see if... All right. It depends, Susanna, on how many trend lines do you have. If the thumb rule is if you have three trend lines, the middle trend line is a strong indication. If you have five trend lines, once again, maybe middle trend line would be an indication. It depends on that. If you have just one trend line, the break of that trend line would be an indication. All right. I had one more question over here before I go ahead with this. There was just one thing. I think Ahmed had a question, okay? Risk to reward, dynamic stop loss higher than the target. Uh, Ahmed, no, in fact, this 
you're saying that you have a stop loss which is higher than the target limit. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. Your risk to reward ratio is the other way around. At the end of a one year period, the account provides positive returns. How can you have positive returns? You will have a higher drawdown. This is a little bit of a contradiction because if your risk to reward ratio is not correct, if your risk is higher than the expected reward, your account will not show positive results. It should not, unless you are very lucky. Right? You should always have a risk to reward ratio where your profits are higher than your expected losses. Right? Okay, Gabriel, uh, on the one hour time frame, you plotted three of them. Uh, exactly, Stacy. You will, uh, I mean, I'm surprised when Ahmed says, Ahmed, honestly, just, just, just one thing, is if you have a risk to reward ratio which is opposite, which is the other way around, your account will not have a positive result at the end of one year. It will just not. Yes, Steve, that's a very good question. As a matter of fact, price comes back to retest a trend line very often. And a retest of a trend line is a very, very strong indication of an effective support resistance. Now, I don't, don't know whether I'll get a situation over here, but it, it is a fact that we will come back. Okay. Uh, Gabriel, you have three of them. Three on New Zealand one, on the Kiwi one. Hour. As far as I'm concerned, I can plot just one. Yes, Boyke, we'll do that. We have just a little bit of time left. As far as we are concerned, this is the only valid trend line because if I plot my trend line on any other fractal is going through the bar. So as far as we are concerned, this is the only valid trend line. It's just a support trend line. We do not have a fractal bar as yet. Right? We can plotting down. Okay. One. One. You have to go fractal to fractal. Two. Absolutely. No. I have one. I can plot one more over here. What is our swing high and the swing low? You can clearly see the swing high and the swing low. Four trend lines. So, if we have four trend lines, once again, thumb rule break of a middle trend line, maybe it could be late, but this right now is a pretty strong indication that there has been a shift of trend and we expect price to move up. Alright, let's use the same concepts before we go ahead with this. Okay, okay, alright, we'll do that. Same concept of plotting Fibonacci ratios. Identify pivot highs and pivot lows. That's the most important concept. So remember for your trend lines as well as Fibonacci ratios, your Fib ratios and your trend lines have to start from a pivot high and a pivot low. So in this case, if this is my pivot high and a pivot low, let's use the simplest Fibonacci retracement. Right? If we have an existing downtrend and price has started moving up, obviously we are looking for levels of resistance, so we plot Fib retracements from, sorry about that, swing high to swing low. So the first thumb rule of a Fib retracement, once again, it has to be plotted on pivot highs. This, this is going to give you the best picture. You cannot plot your Fib ratios from an in-between fractal. Not from a fractal here, not from a fractal here, not from a fractal here. It has to be on pivot fractals. Thumb rule number one. Thumb rule number two, same point which I had made earlier. Fibonacci ratios always to be plotted on the wicks of the candles, never on the real body of the candle. Again, for the simple reason is that the wick of a candle is a place where price has gone. It is price action. You cannot ignore price action. Rule number two, so you have to plot them on the wicks. Rule number three, looking for levels of support or resistance. In this case, we are looking for levels of resistance. 
one minute. I forgot the most important rule for trend lines as well as Fibonacci ratios. Both trend lines and Fibonacci ratios have to be plotted from left to right. Most important. Because that's the place where you can get the correct swing highs or the swing lows. They uh, there were a lot of questions over here. Uh, one is that this is my email. Folks, please, if you have any question, please send me the questions. I'll reply to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this webinar. So I'm not going to be around for about two weeks because I'm headed to Russia. I've been going to Moscow for a Forex Expo. I'm invited as a speaker. So I'm away for two weeks. After I'm back, the next FX Street session on the Thursday, whichever Thursday when I'm back, I'm going to repeat this particular session. And I will also make a PowerPoint presentation on it with the basic rules written down of the trend lines, the trends, and the Fibonacci's. So we'll repeat it once again. In between, if you have any other questions, this is my email. Please feel free to send me an email. And I'll always answer it because we've just run out of time. Uh, Timothy, can you send me an email, please? So, no, Boyaki, we didn't finish the Fibonacci's. We are just in middle because there's still more to be done. And I'll go over it the next time. We've just run out of time over here. Steve, next time, whenever we conduct this session again, uh, I'll give it to you, the PowerPoint. I'll send it across. We'll finish with the session first, and then I'll send it across to you. Okay? Uh, I, I'm really sorry about this, folks. I really apologize. But some technical problems today usually doesn't happen. We'll repeat this again, and we'll go over it in the proper way. We can. We can do that, Dhruv. We can start off with the fibs next time. Not a problem. Uh, Ahmed, that's depends on FX Street on their schedule. I'm okay with anything. So on Thursdays, if they have a time slot available, I'll be there. All right. All right, folks. I'll see you, folks, maybe a couple of weeks down the line. Till the time, have a good trading week, good trading days, good weekend. And once again, I apologize for this. Thank you, Pan and Fire. I'm sure it will be good for Russia. Thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you folks later. Yes, MRC. I, I will take care of the Russian models. Thank you very much. <laughs>